This might be the weirdest thing I've ever gotten. What's up YouTube? This is Hill Phantom. I'm back with another Raspberry Pi accessory review. Now as many of you know that watch the channel, I've been on a quest to be able to take my Raspberry Pi with me on the road. So with the recent launch of the Raspberry Pi 400, I was really excited to take it with me on trips. However, because it lacked a couple different things, most notable a screen, it wasn't as convenient as I thought. So I went on a quest to look for something that I could build like my Raspberry Pi 400 mod, but again, it just wasn't built for travel. So I finally found some alternatives to the very expensive Pi laptop or the Pi book. And this one has a really interesting story. Now you'll notice right here on the cover itself, it says Superbook, but it's marketed and sold by a company and as the Pi Book Pro. Superbook was pretty infamous as a failed Kickstarter. So all these were destined to be in backers' hands. So I don't know how to feel about it other than kind of creepy, but also I like the fact that they're repurposing it. So I understood that the company that originally launched the Kickstarter was called Sentio. Sentio unfortunately went out of business and went bankrupt and not only didn't deliver the products to the backers, but also screwed a lot of their vendors along the way. It was originally launched as an Android phone laptop dock. So you would connect it and use it just like a laptop, but they didn't even bother to work on the software before they went under. One of those vendors picked a couple of these up legally because they were destined for the trash and they convinced the courts to let them have it as part payment for what they owed them for their work on the original super book. That company rebranded it pie book and bought a limited stock. They figured out some scripting and now it's supposed to work with the raspberry Pi. One of the best things about this is it's $80. So when you look at this compared to something like the Pi Top, it's a lot less expensive. However, there is a catch. Because they're buying this from another company, there are no returns, meaning all sales are final, but it's under $100. The laptop itself has 11.6 inch screen. It looks pretty sturdy. It's made pretty well on um, the track pads. All right. I really do like this, the Pi Book Pro. In terms of how it's built, the, the actual plastic is pretty rugged, if you will. It feels good. It doesn't feel flimsy. The hinges on it are pretty nice and the keyboard feels okay. I mean, it's not the best. It feels a little cheap, but what do you expect? The keyboard itself is backlit. 11.6 inch screen as I mentioned and a six hour battery life on the side it has a power DC connection for charging it it has a USB standard port and a USB C port now when we hook this up we're going to be able to hook up the Raspberry Pi via one wire now what is not known yet from the instructions that I've read is if this thing will power the Raspberry Pi I'll also take time to mention here, this is for the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and the Raspberry Pi 4 only. So you can't use legacy older versions with this little Pi Book Pro or Superbook or who knows, it's upside down. Anyways, let's go to the lab and hook it up. Okay, now that we're back in the lab and you've gathered your Raspberry Pi either 3B or 4, what you need to do is install the latest version of the Raspberry Pi operating system on your Raspberry Pi. If you don't know how to do that, head over to the Raspberry Pi Foundation and they have a ton of tutorials and links there to help you out. Once you install the operating system, get that all set up. You're going to need to head over to the Pi Book Pro website. There you can follow the instructions and walk through the setup. We need to make some changes. Really the changes that we're making are downgrading the kernel, then we're going to upgrade some of the libraries, and then we're going to download a legacy driver for display link. And then lastly, just a little adjustment for some visuals. So with that, let's hit the keyboard.
Okay, so it's a few days later and that's twofold. One, I had a little bit of work to do so that got in the way. And second, the install wasn't as straightforward as many folks would have you believe. Now they're very clear on their website that this is a cobbled together project from a failed Kickstarter that they renamed PyBook, but of course here it says Superbook. Feel free to look up that strange and weird internet history of this little lap book. Now they've repurposed it, they wrote some scripts, and apparently there's one gentleman who's not associated with them, but wrote some really great scripts and I just couldn't get them to work. So I reverted to the old way, which is the second link. I'll link it down below where you download a PDF. That seemed to work really well for me, but please note, I tried different versions of repos for the Raspberry Pi operating system. I couldn't find the one they suggested, but I did find one that worked, and I did try multiple different versions and some of them failed, some of them worked, so this one I know at least worked for me. So right off the jump, this is not plug and play, although they're clear about it, you gotta have some knowledge and be okay with things like repositories and maybe just troubleshooting some things when you're compiling. It, it's, it's, it's definitely not for the younger kids, but with someone who has knowledge, it's not too bad. And like with all things Raspberry Pi, I sometimes love that scavenger hunt and being forced to figure out things and connect the dots without being told. It's just part of the adventure of us makers and well, anybody who messes with these things knows exactly what I'm talking about. But what about the build quality? Kind of the same thing we covered in the beginning. It's got you know, a nice plastic backlit keyboard. The display is okay. The only issue I have is the trackpad. Uh, it's just not that great and it didn't recognize that great, but I'm sure I can mess with the settings there. Overall, in terms of build quality, I, you know, I, I would give it a five out of five. The only thing I think they omitted from the hardware side is actually speakers. There's no speakers on this device, so obviously it, it doesn't lend itself to a media device. However, you can always plug into the 3.5 port of your Raspberry Pi that's sitting next to it. And I find I do that quite often. I just like to sound a little bit better. I've also had a lot of issues with Bluetooth and Raspberry Pi speakers and you know YouTubes with the sound being off a little bit than the actual picture. And that sync always seems a little tough for me with Raspberry Pi and Bluetooth audio devices. So I like the 3.5. So I find that this right here, Raspberry Pi 4, 8 gig, is something I would recommend for this and it's a little bit more powerful and I think it performs better if you're looking to use media. Though I wouldn't suggest this for a main media device. For me, it's gonna be sitting at the coffee shop. I will use it for some media because I don't mind plugging into the 3.5. It does just fine, just like you'd normally expect with a Raspberry Pi um, running YouTube or Netflix or, or Amazon, whatever you're into. But I really do think this is geared more towards like a hobbyist maker developer like myself who just likes to have a Raspberry Pi and tinker and play. You know, listen, I have a dream of sitting at a coffee shop and just having my Raspberry Pi and being able to just mess around and relax and just have Linux with me. So um, that's something I really like, especially when you're looking at the price of this. If you have a Raspberry Pi hanging around, you know, this is under $100. But this does bring up something. This actual device, it promised that it would power the Raspberry Pi. The other issue I had with this is it did not power the Raspberry Pi. So this has an internal battery. You hook it up with the AC-DC adapter, it charges up. You're supposed to be able to connect this via USB-C um, and then to control the keyboard and mouse um, and display for USB-A and it gives it power as well. However, it did not work for me no matter what I did. So I had to plug this into an external power or to a battery bank and it worked just fine. So for me, I'm gonna have to carry a little extra battery bank if I wanna take this truly mobile in order to power the Raspberry Pi. But other than that, I enjoyed my time with it. It was fun to run around with the code. Just remember, use the older version or the PDF version of the instructions. And then I'll leave a link to the image that I used from the Pi repository. And basically just is an old image of Buster that seemed to work really well with this script that gets this to work. So in conclusion, I would recommend you buy it if you're a hobbyist developer, if you're looking for multimedia, might not be the best thing for kids. Totally cool if you have a little geek like I was, who's not gonna get frustrated and is gonna take it as a challenge. 
the, this is a great learning platform and just be fun to kind of hook up hardware. It's not horribly difficult, but I would think they'd need some adult supervision in order to get it done. Unless you got a little whiz kid, then they'll absolutely love it. For a hundred bucks, especially with Christmas season coming, it's not bad. Now I will mention, I will be probably getting the pie top. Now all this stuff, I'm not sponsored, so I buy it with my own money. So I'm just waiting to save up a little bit more and get that because like I said, I'm on this quest to go mobile with a Raspberry Pi and this is nice, but I do wanna try out some of the more expensive competitors like Pi Top. So when I get that, of course, I'll follow up with another review and tell you all my feelings on that. So if you're not already subscribed or if you just wanna help me out, like the video, I'd appreciate that. Until next time, I'm Hill Phantom and I'll see ya.